Tonight we have a special guest with us, Susan Callison, and she's with the Alzheimer's Association. And I know she uh, came to our office and was visiting with Pastor Weaver a few weeks ago, and he felt very impressed that this is something that we as a church need to hear. Uh, I don't know how many of you, your family has been affected by dementia or Alzheimer's. Uh, my grandfather, back in the 1980s, it wasn't, didn't have an official diagnosis of Alzheimer's, um, but it was a very rough time uh, that we went through with him. Uh, some very fond memories of those times, uh, but uh, I got a glimpse of, of really what uh, challenges are presented with a difficult disease. And so uh, tonight, some of you are affected by this, but our prayer and our hope tonight is that as a church, uh, being informed tonight will give us more uh, information, more knowledge to be able to help and minister to families uh, in our community, families here in our church, um, and, uh, and to even s begin to s start some support groups uh, for those that, um, that, are, uh, that, are, that are dealing with this. So Susan's got a lot of more information about this, and she'll give you opportunity. We're not receiving an offering tonight for her. This is what she does. Uh, she travels and speaks and speaks to groups like this. And, um, but uh, there will be opportunities. She'll sh tell you how you can get on their website or there's uh, um, information at a table out here and she's gonna be out there talking afterwards uh, for you to be able to give to support the Alzheimer's Association. But will you give Susan Callison a warm welcome? Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to come today. I have a PowerPoint coming up here in a moment. But first, I want to give you a little direction. I have a little assignment to start with. So I get extra credit if you sign my clipboard. And so there's a clipboard in each section. If so we could start this, there's one right here and one in each section. But I get credit if you give me your first name, last name, and zip code. So not enough information to get on a mailing list, but I get credit. So if you wouldn't mind signing that, and if you want more information about Alzheimer's or how you can get involved, put down more contact information and we'd be happy to connect with you after the program. And if after you hear about more about Alzheimer's tonight, um, but you just gave me your first name, last name, and zip code, you can stop at the table in the back and we can talk more later about, about what you can do if you're feeling called to do a little more, then um, we'd love your prayers and in your encouragement for families who are affected with Alzheimer's disease. So the PowerPoint is coming right up. One minute, okay. So I, um, I work for the Alzheimer's Association. It's a national organization. We're a nonprofit. We have a local chapter right here in central Iowa. Our office is in West Des Moines, and I'm the program specialist. So we have people who do advocacy and fundraising so that we can support uh, research and do programs. But my job here in Central Iowa is to, is to uh, provide programs and services for the families that are affected with Alzheimer's disease. So both the folks who have a diagnosis and caregivers. We know that there are over 5 million people in America today with Alzheimer's disease. There are over 67,000 in, in Iowa. And so the prevalence in, uh, in uh, America today is that one in nine people at age 65 and older, one in nine have Alzheimer's disease. So wow, isn't that a lot of people? One in nine at age 65 and older. And at age 85, it's one in three. So I bet it affects a lot of you that are here today. Um, and, you know, it it's our, was our grandparents and, you know, the neighbor, and now it's showing up in our family and our friends and our, our grandparents and our parents and our spouses. So we're trying to do a lot of research to try and find out what's going on with it showing up more and more often. And that's one of the reasons I'm so grateful to be invited here today is to tell you more about what it is and what we can do about it because the stigma needs to go away. We need to talk about it and that's how the conversation starts is by being able to share the information. So today we're gonna talk about the, the 10 warning signs and the difference between normal age-related memory loss that we all experience and something more serious. So um, we'll go ahead and um, get started on the program. So this is a quote by Jay Smith. His wife, Patty, was diagnosed two years after the onset of symptoms. 
So Jay says that if we could have had the correct diagnosis two years earlier, it would have given us more time to plan, to do things that could result in a good quality of life, and to accomplish things that we always wanted to do that get put off for this reason or that. And I think we'd all agree, if we all knew 10 years ago what we know today, would we make different decisions along the way? Well, of course we would and especially because of our health. So if I know that I have something like Alzheimer's disease or my spouse does, you know, having that diagnosis and knowing what's going on can help us make better decisions so we can have the very best quality of life. So that's why we're sharing with you what are the warning signs and at what point should we see a doctor. And so um, we're gonna learn more about that today. And so we're gonna learn from people like us. So all three of these people on the screen look like they could be sitting next to you right here um, tonight. And all three of these people have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. In the early stages, people are still very aware of their surroundings. They start to notice something's going on, but they still can live a very full um, life and be part of our communities, and they are. And a lot of times people don't know that our neighbors or friends or um, loved ones are actually living with the diagnosis. So we're gonna learn more about that today. And so this is Mary Ann. She has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. And she says that we need to be part of the change. We need to be part of talking about it. We don't have to be afraid anymore. You know, 20 and 30 years ago when people got cancer, nobody wanted to talk about it. You couldn't even say that word. You said it was the C word. Well, that's what the deal is with Alzheimer's today. When somebody gets a diagnosis or they think that might be what it is, nobody will talk about it. They, they go home and they get isolated and they don't tell anybody because they don't want to know and they don't want to deal with it. And yet the only way we're gonna get beyond the stigma of Alzheimer's is if we talk about it. You know, anything that's hard, is, that's difficult, it's hard to talk about. But the more we talk about it, the easier it's gonna get. And so that's why we're gonna go ahead and try and talk about it here tonight. And so we're gonna go ahead and get started with what's the difference between Alzheimer's disease and normal age-related memory loss. And so one of the myths is that having a little touch of dementia is a typical part of aging. I even hear still, some doctors still believe that, and it's not the case. In reality, as we age, many of our physical capabilities, including our memory, begin to diminish. But having a harder time remembering some things is very different than having a form of, of dementia, like Alzheimer's disease. So, so we all are gonna expect to lose a little bit of our memory as we age. So that kind of thing means that it's time to walk out the door and where's my keys? Who does that happen to? Come on, we know. Where's my keys? Where did I set them down? That's normal age-related memory loss. Is it happening more? As we get a little older, it happens a little more often. Well, it happens because that's, we get busier, we get more stressed, and we need to pay attention more. You know, that's something we can learn to manage, but it happens more as we age. We can't run as fast as we used to when we were 20. Those are age-related changes that happen. It's like, what day is it? Do I have to go to work today? No, it's Sunday, I don't go to work today. That's normal that we, you know, have a little bit of memory loss as we age. And so, um, at, but what is Alzheimer's disease is something more serious. And so what's happening with that is that it's a progressive disease that destroys brain cells. So that, that memory loss, it's, an, it's a massive acceleration of the challenges in our memory loss. So it's much bigger. It's, um, it's not being able to remember that I was even in the room where I left my keys. I can't retrace my steps. And so dementia is the symptom, and Alzheimer's disease is just one of the diseases that causes that memory loss or problem. So Alzheimer's disease, it's progressive, it's a disease of the brain and it destroys brain cells. It causes problems with memory, thinking, and behavior. So our brain's in charge of our thinking and the, memory, or the cognitive loss is what dementia is. So dementia is the overall term and Alzheimer's disease is just one of the diseases that causes that. There are many, many, many other kinds of dementia. Alzheimer's disease is just the one that happens most of the time, like 70% of the time. 
So dementia is the overall general term. Um, though there are some treatments that can help with some of the symptoms, Alzheimer's disease is eventually fatal. It's progressive. It starts out very slow and very small, but it progresses through the brain and it can last up to 20 years. So you can live many, many, many good years, but it is progressive and it is unfortunately uh, eventually fatal. Another myth, if I have memory loss, that means I have Alzheimer's disease or dementia, and that is not true. In reality, many people have trouble with their memory, but it does not mean that they have Alzheimer's disease. Most of the time, they do not. So it's important to see a doctor to find out what's really going on. And so we're going to share some of the risk factors. The number one risk factor is age. The older we get, the higher percentage chance we might get Alzheimer's disease. So like I said, at age 65, one in nine people. At age 85, one in three. More women have Alzheimer's disease, but mostly because women live longer. There are more women in our, in our world age 85 older than there are men. So mostly the reason women have it more often is that women live longer. Uh, another myth, if Alzheimer's disease runs in your family, genetic testing will tell you whether you will get it get the disease too. And in reality, having a parent or a sibling with Alzheimer's disease does increase your risk, but it still doesn't mean you'll get it. And genetic testing doesn't always tell you whether you'll get it or not. So of those people that it runs in their family, only 5% of the time is it genetic. So it's important to um, see a doctor and find out whether or not it's worth your while to even get genetic testing. They can't always tell from that. Um, the genetics, um, they, they do have a specific gene that sometimes they can identify it later uh, when they do that test. And again, it's a good idea to talk to the doctor or a genetic counselor to find out whether or not this is a good risk for you. There's a definite brain-body connection. What we've learned is what's good for our heart is good for our brain. And so all those, that information that says you're supposed to diet and exercise, that's important for your heart, but now we also learn that that's, that's also helpful for your brain. The evidence is showing that it can delay the onset. So we also know that um, the risk for Alzheimer's disease or vascular dementia is increased if you do have heart disease. And again, it still could be decades later when it shows up, but more people get it if they have uh, heart disease or a damaged heart. Diabetes in midlife, a larger percentage of those folks are getting Alzheimer's disease. And there is a strong link between serious head injury and the risk for dementia. So all this information can help us make better decisions on our health today to try and delay the onset or maybe not get it at all if we know more information about the risks and the, um, the prevalence of it in our, in our world. And so we're going to get right into the 10 warning signs. And so the first one is memory changes that disrupt your daily life. So it's forgetting things that you recently learned. So, you know, for me, I, you know, I meet, I meet a lot of people and they tell me their name and I forget their name right away. Well, it's because I'm not paying attention. I've always had that problem. So for me, that's not going to be Alzheimer's disease. But if I've always been good at remembering people's names and then it comes a day where I can't, that's a warning sign for me. So it's a change in what you've always been able to do. Sometimes you hear people ask the same information over and over again. Or they tell you a story and then they tell it again and they don't have any ability to even know that they've just asked that question. The brain cells that are in charge of remembering can't. And so it's, it's different than just not paying attention. It's you don't have the ability anymore to even know that you've just asked a question. So this is the most common first symptom that people see. This is Sue and she has a strategy. So even though she has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, what she does is she writes things down. She keeps a, a notebook in her pocket and she writes things down. And that helps, and that helps a lot of people when they're in the early stages to write things down, write things on their calendar. And so there are things you can do to help be able to better manage some of those early symptoms. Um, number two is challenges in planning or solving problems. So if you've always been good at solving problems and then it comes a day where that doesn't make sense how to do it anymore. Like you're really good at paying your bills or writing checks and then it comes a day where you don't know how to write the check. 
It's not that you just forgot to make a payment once in a while. That can happen to anybody. But you forget how to write out the check. So that's kind of the second warning sign. If you've always been good at working with numbers or following a familiar recipe, and then it comes a day that it doesn't make sense, like there's, you know, like you're making a cake and it says two eggs, but you don't know what to do with the eggs. You forgot that you crack them and beat them and put them in the recipe. It, it doesn't make sense anymore how to do those common things that we've always been able to do. The next one is difficulty completing familiar tasks, uh, maybe trouble driving to a once familiar place. So folks might uh, come regularly to a park and then it comes a day where they look around and they don't recognize where they are. The brain cells that were in charge of knowing that, those are the ones that may be broken in that situation. Um, difficulty remembering rules of a favorite game. Well, that would be one that you learned recently. If you learn how to play cards when you're five, you're going to remember how to do that even if you have Alzheimer's for a very long time. So what you, rem what you learned a long time ago, you're going to keep more than what you just learned last week. That's what you can't remember when you, that's the symptom for Alzheimer's disease. Um, this is Joyce. She has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. And she has a PhD. So we do know that the more education you have, it lowers your risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. But even people with really a lot of higher education can get it. And so she's very highly educated, but it came a day when she couldn't make change. She's always been able to make change, but it didn't make sense how to do that anymore. And that's how she knew she needed to see a doctor, was those normal things you've always been able to do, you couldn't do anymore. Um, number four, confusion with time and place. So look, losing track of, you know, today would be confusing for somebody who had Alzheimer's disease. It seemed like it was nice and yet it's winter. But folks with Alzheimer's disease can, can think it's nice outside when it's really cold and want to wear shorts outside even when it's really cold or wear too many clothes when it's nice outside. So folks get confused about seasons and the passage of time or they forget where they are or how they got there. You hear about folks wandering and getting lost because they've lost their way. They can't connect with time and place. Trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships. So uh, vision changes for many people with Alzheimer's disease. As we age, our peripheral vision does begin to diminish a little bit, but with Alzheimer's disease, it closes in even further. So it's like you get tunnel vision. So when you can't see up here and around, you, you might not notice that there's something on the table or that you're working on. You need to move your eyes so that you can see because you've lost your peripheral vision. And folks start running into things, either walking or driving. They start having accidents. And they might start falling more often because they lose a little bit of visual and spatial relationships. So that can be a warning sign. Uh, new problems with words and speaking. So having trouble joining or following a conversation, they get lost in the conversation. Uh, difficulty tracking or trouble with vocabulary. In the early stages, folks lose some of their words. They typically lose nouns first. So they might not be able to come up with the right word for you know, what things are called, but they can still describe them. So the creative and descriptive side of our brain works better longer than the nouns or the, the facts of the matter. And so folks start having trouble following a conversation because they can't think of the words. In the early stages, they might lose one in every seven words. In the middle stages, it's about half the words that they are having trouble finding the right words. And in the later stages, they might only be able to do one of seven words. So it gets more difficult to follow a conversation. They might start having more trouble with their vocabulary and calling things the, right name, the wrong name. Because our brain actually has 100 billion brain cells. So people start losing some. We grow new brain cells as, as we age, even if we have Alzheimer's disease. But the ones that are in charge of certain words are gone. But we have other ones that logic still works. So we might use logic and, and think of a new word to call things. And so they might get real descriptive or real creative as the disease progresses. 
Um, Joyce talks again about how things aren't coming out right. She thought her conversations and her emails were just fine, and people told her, it doesn't make any sense what you're writing to me, and she thought they were just fine. So when you're in the middle of having the diagnosis, you don't always know what you're saying isn't making any sense, but people start telling you, and they start looking at you kind of quizzically. So you, the reaction can be a little bit confusing. Number seven is misplacing things and losing the ability to retrace steps. We see commercials about this one, where people put things in unusual places, and at the time, they really thought that was the right place to put, like finding your keys in the freezer. At the time, you really think that's the right place, but then you don't have the ability to know that's where you put them, so things are missing. And yet, you know you didn't put them there, so somebody must be moving your stuff. So you hear about people accusing others of stealing or moving your things, which can be incredibly frustrating. This, again, is a warning sign that something more serious could be going on. Decreased or poor judgment. Um, as we age, you know, you hear about seniors sometimes getting taken advantage of. People with Alzheimer's can sometimes be talked into things that they never would have done before, like giving money to telemarketers or start spending more money impulsively. They lose their ability to, to make good judgment. Things that they've always known, right from wrong, don't make sense to them anymore. They change their perspective on what's okay and what's not okay. So we need to be supportive and helpful for those folks who are maybe not making the best decision. And yet we want to respect and honor them and help them make, be able to make their own decisions as much as they can. So this one is a little difficult situation for many families. Number nine, withdrawal from work or social activities. So when these things start to happen, it's very confusing for families. So they sometimes start to withdraw or they lose track of things that they've always loved, like their favorite sports team or a favorite hobby, and they'll start avoiding social situations. And we know that people really need to stay engaged in their community. It can help all of us in our overall health if we stay engaged and stay socially involved in our community, and especially if we have Alzheimer's. So this is a warning sign and something that we really need to help people stay socially engaged. And the number 10 is changes in mood and personality. And if any of these things were happening to any of us, it would make us confused and suspicious and fearful. And we'd have a lot of anxiety and agitation. Again, these are all warning signs that something's wrong and we need to see a doctor. And so what should we do if we see any of these in ourselves, in a loved one, in a neighbor, in a community member here at, at the church? Well, number one, we need to talk about it. We can't just hide anymore. We need to talk about it with family and friends because we need to find out what's going on and get help. We need to visit a doctor and find out what's really going on and get the right treatment as soon as possible. Because it might not be Alzheimer's disease at all. It could be something more serious or less serious, but we need to find out what's going on. And this is Susan, and she's advocating for that as well. She says, just talk about it. I know it's hard. But if you talk about it, it'll get easier. And if you need to practice, you can call the Alzheimer's Association. At the table in the back, we have cards. The purple cards have our 800 number on it, and it's on all our screens. You can call them with any question on, you know, how do I get involved, or I think I have it, or I have a loved one who has it, or I have a neighbor who I think they're going to get lost. What should I do? You can call the 800 number. You can practice talking about it with them. They're staffed 24 7, and they can help people be able to find answers to the questions that they need. So it's really important that you get an accurate diagnosis. We know that there are some conditions, like a, it could even be a brain tumor or an infection that can be treated or dealt with that it might not be Alzheimer's disease at all. So getting a good diagnosis is really important. So one myth is that there's no point in getting a diagnosis because dementia is not curable or treatable. It'll just upset my family, so why should I go see the doctor? We hear that a lot, is I have a loved one, they won't go to the doctor. They don't want to know. And yet, we need to know what we're dealing with. And so early diagnosis is the only way that you can get help and get treatment. It might not be Alzheimer's disease at all. There are some things that mimic the, some of these symptoms that can be treated. So it's important to know what we're dealing with. 
Another myth is you don't need a complete set of diagnostic tests. You can just try a medication for memory loss. If it works, you'll know. And of course, that's not true. There are some over-the-counter medications that we're hearing on TV, and the Alzheimer's Association is very evidence-based. And we don't have any evidence that any of those work. And so it's really important that you see a doctor and be thoroughly assessed so that you really know what you're doing. Um, this is Gary. He was diagnosed with early onset about 5% of the time. People get a diagnosis younger than age 65. People as young as 30 have gotten a diagnosis. And they don't always know. When you're that young, they're not sure what it is. So sometimes it takes six months or a year or two years before the doctors have enough evidence before they can give an accurate diagnosis. But again, it's important to just see a doctor to try and find out what's going on. If people have memory loss, the Alzheimer's Association will support them. They don't have to have a diagnosis. We're here to help people try and figure out what this is and how to deal with it in your families. Some of the diagnostic steps, they'll do a physical exam, they'll do a neurological exam, they'll do brain scans. Sometimes they'll just ask a lot of questions. Today, with 95% accuracy and with enough information, doctors can diagnose Alzheimer's disease. It was just a few years ago they, they couldn't do it, but today they can. And if you need um, uh, recommendations from doctors with that kind of experience, the Alzheimer's Association has that kind of information. Um, the tests can identify other disorders that can be treatable. So certain infections, anemia, um, vitamin deficiencies, excess use of alcohol, those things can be treated and can be, in, can be uh, the symptoms can improve. So again, you need to know what you're dealing with so that you can get the right treatment. There are many forms of dementia. There are Alzheimer's disease as one, just one of them. It's the one that happens 70% of the time. But here's a few more. I've heard there are 80 different kinds of dementia. These are some of the other more common ones. Again, we support any family with any kind of dementia. And again, the symptoms that people have is how they identify which kind it is. So if you get a diagnosis of, of dementia, most importantly, you need to get the maximum benefit from available treatments. There are some treatments that can help with some of the symptoms. It's important to get information about clinical trials. There are many clinical trials that are actually showing great promise, but you need to know what you're dealing with and you can find out about those clinical trials that are available um, through the Alzheimer's Association as well. Um, early diagnosis is very important. Um, and it's, it's the only way that you can get support and help for you and your family. The Alzheimer's Association has support groups and education programs. We deliver those all over, all over Iowa, all over the country. Um, they're available online and we're here to provide support. We also recruit volunteers that we train to be support group facilitators and we're just so grateful to be able to share some of that information with all of you today. We're hoping that if there is interest, we will continue to do more education classes and we'll provide support groups right here in your community. And again, I'm going to be here afterwards for a while after the program today. And if people have more questions, we're happy to try and support families um, here in our community. I also have some of my cards. And so if you want to contact me directly here in central Iowa, I'm happy to provide care and support to families. So thank you so much for being able to come and share some information with you. Just want to say thank you to Susan, and uh, I, this is it's 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 information, and it's the beginning of a conversation. It sounds like to me there's a lot more to learn. As I look out, and I just know our our church, there are a number of people who um, are facing this issue, and it's not just here in our church; it's everywhere. It's a community thing, and I think it's one thing that if we can. Um, just kind of grab hold of this and, and understand and learn more. There's so much opportunity for us to come alongside and help and, and minister to uh, people all around us. And so uh, there is going to be opportunity, hopefully, um, and you'll be hearing about that. Uh, Susan is going to be available in the future for, for more information if you'd like to do that, not in a service like this, but we'll find another time that works. And uh, I would encourage you um, uh, if, if this is something that just connects with you in your heart or it's something that you're facing and dealing with uh, to get plugged in and involved in. If we can develop a support group out of that, that would be great. 
If you've got questions, more questions, of course, Susan is going to be at the table, and she said she'd stick around as long as uh, there are people that uh, want to talk about that. So I want to encourage you, if you've got a question, there's something maybe on your heart tonight uh, toward this, uh, stop by and talk to her afterwards, and there is definitely some more information and uh, places that you can get more information. So.